like you Ooh. Healthcare assistant, do you ever wonder which environments are you most likely to end up working in? Which areas of work are you likely to get in as you employ for a job in the UK as a healthcare assistant? There are many, many a setting in which you might find yourself working in. It's very important to familiarize yourself with each setting as to where are you likely to be employed and what skills are you going to need to work in each of those areas that I'm going to cover in this video today. So shall we start first of all with a scenario where you are employed within a hospital, for example, assuming it will be the NHS hospital or it can be a private, but at the moment it would seem the National Health Care Service, the NHS, which is the government hospital, as I keep reminding you what this um, acronyms and abbreviations stand for. So the NHS is the government hospital. Assuming you get employed as a healthcare assistant in the government hospital, your role is most likely going to be slightly different to that of someone who is working as a living carer, for example. Within the hospital, since it's an acute setting where people are ill and um, there is a high turnaround, turnover of patients, you will find that your role amongst others might include um, taking vital signs in some of the places. Um, they do allow healthcare assistants to take vital signs such as the blood pressure, the pulse, the heart rate. Um, you will find that your job also involves provision of personal care where you're providing personal care to your patients and some of the patients might even be self-caring in this acute setting where you're not needing to do as much for them as far as personal care is concerned. It could be that you are tasked with uh, things such as the stock levels, ensuring that the stock levels are correct within the unit um, and topping up of uh, such. Um, the healthcare assistants where I'm working are involved in things such as um, assisting, um, working alongside actually the major part of the team we work together, a major part of the team where they assist with uh, the care, perhaps with things such as stocking up their stock levels, as I'm saying, uh, checking, making sure that the um, Things such as the sluice room is kept clean, things such as um, that the nurses are fine and needing all the care, needing all, having all the support they need, and as well as making sure that things are, um, the nurses are well supported. Seriously, they basically come around and make sure that the nurses are fine and well taken care of. And they also, we also make sure that they are fine and well supported in their role. They will ask you as a nurse as to what do you need, what don't you need as far as support is concerned. So in an acute, acute setting, it's very different to a long-term setting. I want to say hi. <laughs> Mind you, these are just brief settings. The second scenario, it could well be that you are now out of the acute setting into the long-term setting, which will be the nursing home. Let's talk about the nursing home for old age people. The UK has got a very well-structured um, setup for um, old age homes. It's quite well organized. The government has gotten that so right. So many people, when they reach a particular age, maybe after 80 or so, their families, their children will check them in into a home. Hence the demand, so much demand for nurses, for carers, especially uh, healthcare assistants um, for such areas. So in the setting, your main job especially is to ensure uh, personal care is provided for people who are residents, as they call them, residents of the home, make sure that um, they're well taken care of, that the hydration levels are adequate, their nutrition. Some people are still independent, some need assistant with fee assistance with feeding and um, things like that for ensuring their nutritional requirements are met. Personal care will involve taking them to the toilet, ensuring that they're clean and dry all the time, repositioning um, and things like that. This is within a residential care home setting. Companionship, as I've said in this video of Attached, is a big thing that a healthcare system does. Um, you are one person that's going to spend a whole lot more time with the residents than anybody else, um, as opposed to maybe the nurse in charge or other people or the physiotherapist or the dietitian. You are the person that's going to spend the most time with this person, so you are entrusted with so much in your role. Scenario number three, 
you might find yourself in a live-in um, setting where you actually, as the name suggests, live in with your client within their home. These are people who are still very reasonably independent and they wish to remain within their homes, but they need care, they need support. Some of the so this is when you're with somebody in their own home in some of the places someone might need support just for four hours for you to pop in and out for four hours to help them dress up wake up help them with a cup of tea and maybe remind them to take their medication some people need care around the clock hence you need to live in and the ones for the ones that need care for about four hours or three hours however long as per agreement with their package organizer that's when you need a driving license and hence i've included the video that tells you of how you can exchange your foreign license to a uk license that's when you'll need to drive from house to house providing care for these clients but if you are in a live-in setting you live with them and support them cook for them do shopping for them hence the need for things such as the crb the dbs the police check it's all the same thing it's all one and the same thing hence the need for such to ensure that you are a trustworthy the person that can be trusted with somebody's finances to be in, within somebody's home because you will be the one going around to do their shopping you will be the one having access to places they cannot access in their own home so you can imagine how important what um, a role um, trust plays it's such a vital role so you will be that person within a live-in setting so that is scenario number three and last but not least the other scenario could be you working as a support worker Support worker can easily be in the community, within the community where you have a job within perhaps a learning disability center for adults or for young people. Um, these are people who are reasonably, mostly reasonably independent, uh, but they need support, they need guidance, they need um, supervision for someone to make sure that they carry on with the activities of daily living with minimal support, but you are there to ensure their safety and you are there to help them make informed choices that um, Put them first and uh, ensure their safety above all so these are people who still go out for activities and group activities to go and um, go out on days outings to go for um, movies to go for shopping with you some are wheelchair bound some are walking but they need support or some are working with a walking aid so it just depends on what scenario you end up in so it's just good for you to have an understanding that you might land up in any of these uh, spectrums i have in any of these options that i have mentioned here so be open-minded i think either one of them is good either one of them is good any any one of them i wouldn't be too fussy be open-minded when you approach this and don't be too fast as to which one you want to do because my feeling is once you are in the uk you'll be able to learn more about which is best suited for yourself but they are all equally good and all equally beneficial so at this point what you might be wanting to do is to start to google to look up a support care worker in the UK and see what the what role they do live in carer just familiarize yourself and just see what people have to say people who've done this people who are doing this what do they have to do just go into Google and search or any other search engine a healthcare assistant sometimes healthcare assistants are available in the GP surgery some are available in the dentist surgery but I haven't seen um, the certificate of sponsorships being issued for these just yet so these things change all of the time as i keep saying so just keep an eye out for these and i shall see you on the next video remain on the cast with daphne place where inspiration meets evolution thank you for staying tuned